Good morning and welcome to the Tacoma Buddhist Temple's Virtual Spring Ohigan and BWA Memorial Service. My name is Carrie Mori and I am the religious chair um, of the Tacoma Buddhist Women's Association. On behalf of the Tacoma BWA, I would like to thank Reverend Koyama and the Tacoma Buddhist Temple for today's special service. I would also like to thank Reverend Cindy Yasaki and pianist Donna Sasaki. Today we are observing the Tacoma Buddhist Women's Association annual BWA Memorial Service honoring Lady Takeko Kujo and Lady Yoshiko Otani and to express our gratitude to all of the women who have contributed their time, effort, and support for, for the welfare of our organization locally and in Japan. Lady Takeko Kujo was born in Japan in 1887 and was the daughter of Koshon Otani, the 21st Monshu of the Hoganji. In 1904, at the age of 17, she and her sister-in-law, Kazuko Otani, co-founded the Fujinkai, or Buddhist Women's Association. They pioneered the movement for public service, initially sending care packages to the soldiers during the Russo-Japanese War of 1904, and later helping families who had lost their sons in combat. She also founded the Asako Hospital, one of Japan's first modern medical centers, and was instrumental in the establishment of the Kyoto Joshi Gankyun, or the Kyoto Women's Educational Institution. Lady Kujo dedicated much of her life giving a greater voice to Buddhist women, promoting women's status, and redefining the role of women at the temple. She was a noted poet and wrote poems and gathas about her Nimbutsu faith. She died in 1929 at the age of 42 after developing an infection while carrying out her charitable work in the slums following the great Kantu earthquake. We are also honoring the dedicated work of Lady Yoshiko Otani, the spouse of the 23rd Monshu Kosho Otani. After World War II, she revitalized the BWA by visiting many temples in Japan and overseas. She encouraged women to get involved in the propagation of the Buddha Dharma. And she strengthened the Jodo Shinshu women's groups for 39 years. She was an inspiration for all Buddhist women. She was also the first to institute conferences in Japan as well as worldwide so that diverse BWA chapters could benefit from the better communication and learn about the various cultural trad traditions of each region. The first World Buddhist Women's Convention was held in Kyoto in 1961. During this BWA memorial service, we are also honoring members of our Tacoma BWA that we have lost since our last BWA memorial. Due to the onset of the pandemic, we were unable to have this service in 2020. To, therefore, today, we would like to honor and remember the four members that we have lost since March of 2019. Namo Mida Butsu, Namo Mida Butsu, Namo Mida Butsu, Namanda, Namanda, Namanda. And now, Reverend Yasaki will lead us in the chanting of Jusege. Snowmonda, 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 snowmonda.
no more no 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 For this service, in lieu of the Dharma talk, there will be a special segment presented by the Tacoma Buddhist Women's Association. Well, I grew up in rural Oahu before the 80s, and my grandmother was a BWA member and my mother is a BWA member at my hometown. Since I grew, um, grew up in the temple during my childhood, it was a major part of my life. And it wasn't until years later when I moved to Washington in 1980 that I thought about becoming a member um, after I started my family. So since I grew up in the temple, and saw my mother's active participation and involvement, I also wanted that for my children um, to be exposed to the traditions and cultures of a Japanese Buddhist temple. I also feel that the BWA is the heart of a temple and belonging would be an additional benefit for my children as well as for my personal growth. To me, the BWA means a gathering of women with a common interest to support the temple in religious and uh, social events. Whether it is to help at a temple fundraiser or do food preparation, crafting, or going on a bus trip, being a part of the fellowship, and sharing ideas is a wonderful experience. And to see our members come together to achieve a common goal and to be a part of it with them is a great honor. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Just wanted to say hello. And um, I miss you all. And um, I can't wait for us to get back together again. Denise had asked me a couple questions. One was, why did I join BWA? Uh, actually, two reasons. One was uh, my mom, who used to send in her $2 membership every year, and she couldn't physically come to the temple, but she always sent her membership. And I thought, wow, this is really an important organization. And the second reason was, a long time ago, when I was naive and quiet, uh, Kiku Morita had asked me to join BWA. And at that time, you just didn't say no to Kiku. And so here I am. The second question was, what does BWA mean to me? And actually, I had to think about that one. Um, I want to say it was Reverend Kakihara who said that the BWA was the backbone of a temple. And I didn't truly understand that except when I became president in July of 2017. Um, I saw how BWA supported the temple. Uh, we do services, we help with the fundraisers, any of the activities, we support the minister and any of his needs. Uh, my favorite thing was when the BWA did a Dharma school cooking class, and I know the kids absolutely love those. Um, I saw how BWA supported the community. We did four or five drives every year. We did a lot of fellowship for our members, uh, starting with the January New Year's party. Everything we did seemed to kind of gather around food, and it was fun. My favorite one was um, the BWA bus trips, our annual bus trips. That was always uh, fun to see everybody laughing and enjoying each other's company, whether they were members or not. I thought that was really cool. Um, 
I did also learn that BWA makes a lot of Daifuku mochi, and that's kind of what we're known for. And honestly, from those two and a half years as president, I don't think I've made more Daifuku mochi than I've done in my entire life. It was a lot of Daifuku mochi, but that's what we are known for, and it's, uh, it's a positive thing. So what does BWA mean to me? Um, I have to say that even though we're a really small organization, uh, we have survived for almost 100 years. And I truly believe it's because of the men and women members that we have and the non-members who help us at any of our activities. And it's because of their support, their dedication, and their belief in who we are is why we stand strong today. And um, I'm just really proud to be part of that group. Um, and in saying all that, I just wanted to say, um, I know we have done telephoning and emailing to many of you, and it just doesn't quite cut it. And I know that we'll be in person soon. So until that time, um, take care. Hi, my name is Crystal Lange, and I joined the BWA for that sense of camaraderie and this community. Uh, when you're part of a smaller organization within the temple, it's just a really nice way to get to know people better. And uh, you get this sense of kimochi, this feel really good feeling uh, when people are a part of a group uh, whether you're doing social or fundraising or religious events, the backbone of the temple is really the BWA. And um, being a part of this organization is just fun. So you learn lots of things. You learn lots of things about people and food and just working together to get things done. It feels good. So I look forward to uh, seeing some of you as new members and if you haven't joined or rejoined, please consider. So uh, it's a really important organization and it's really fun. So thank you. We will now have a special memorial presentation that honors the past Tacoma Buddhist Women's Association members. Yaiko Nakano was born on August 2, 1922, in Japan, after her mother had traveled from her home in Tacoma to see family. While in Japan, Yaiko's mother realized she was pregnant, and rather than return home on a two-weeks-long voyage by steamship, she chose to stay with her family until she gave birth. After Yaiko's first birthday, they returned to the family home in Tacoma on the corner of 19th and Fawcett Avenue. In her early years, she went to school at McCarver Elementary and the Japanese language school in the afternoons. Her love of music started very early, but because the family did not have a piano, she spent many hours practicing at the temple and the Japanese language school. She attended Lincoln High School until the family was uprooted to the Puyallup and Pinedale Assembly Centers, then on to Tule Lake internment camp during World War II. There, she met and married Yoshihiro George Nakano. After the war, they returned to the Tacoma Fife area along with their firstborn son, Kenichi. They were unable to find housing and temporarily lived on the stage in the temple. Yaiko was a very active member of Tacoma Buddhist Temple for many years, teaching Dharma school for over 25 years, playing organ and piano for over 60 years, and was a dedicated member of the Buddhist Women's Association. I asked Donna Sasaki to share her memories of Mrs. Nakano. So often, because we were at the temple all the time and involved with music for services, many newcomers would think that Yaiko and I were mother and daughter. We are related, though. Yaiko's grandfather and my great-grandmother were brother and sister. I always felt that Yaiko was my music mother as she guided me so often with her abundant knowledge of music. For many decades, she provided all the organ music for temple services, weddings, and funerals. Yaiko was a wonderful musician. She learned to play the organ and piano and taught students for over 60 years. She was instrumental in convincing me to join the local music teachers association in Tacoma, then to the closer chapter in Puyallup. 
We also spent wonderful hours rehearsing and then performing duets for other music teachers in chapter programs. Yaiko was also very creative as she wrote many skits that were performed by our BWA and other temple members and minister for the entertainment programs at our Northwest District Buddhist Conventions. Complete with costumes and props, each skit was humorous and quite entertaining. Yaiko loved gardening and enjoyed tending to her large garden next to her house. She also had a huge wisteria in her yard and some years ago gave me a start of it. Around Mother's Day, I enjoy its beautiful purple flowers. Each day, as I glance out my kitchen window, I look at the wisteria and am reminded of Yaiko's beautiful qualities and how much she enriched my life. The temple was a major part of Yaiko's life. Even in later years, when it was difficult for her to get around, her loving sons would take turns bringing her to the temple each Sunday. Having given so much of her life to the temple, just being there gave her much peace, happiness, and true joy. The BWA lost another member in 2019 when Linda Teal passed away in November. Linda was the second eldest of seven siblings born to Kyoto and Katsume Koga in Shimizu Machi, Kumamoto Ken, Japan. She was a teenager during World War II and experienced many hardships along with her family and millions of other Japanese civilians who struggled to survive. In her 20s, Linda met and married U.S. Army officer Orin Teal, who was stationed in Japan. The couple later moved to Lakewood in 1956. Orin passed away just six years later in 1962, leaving Linda on her own in a foreign country. Always resourceful and outgoing, Linda found employment as a menswear tailor for Sears, where she worked until her retirement. During her early years as a single woman, Linda enjoyed outings and vacations with her female co-workers, including parties, dances, and trips to Reno. At about the same time, Linda began attending services at the temple, where she met and befriended many members. Linda devoted countless hours of service to the Buddhist Women's Association, the Temple Board of Directors, and any and all other temple activities, fundraisers, and events. Linda was known as someone that could always be counted on. She was an exceptional cook and taught many cooking classes for the Sangha and the Dharma School, and always made sure volunteers were well-fed during temple fundraising activities. It was at the temple where Linda met Yoshimi Maeda, who would become her lifelong companion. The couple enjoyed gardening, fishing, and hunting, and spending memorable days and nights at their beach property on Anderson Island, where they hosted gatherings with many friends. Linda was brimming over with talent and skill, and mastered many forms of art and crafts. She was a wonderful cook and a master gardener who was honored with inclusion in the prestigious Pierce College Garden Tour in the 1990s. After her retirement from Sears, Linda enrolled in Pierce College at Fort Stillicum and earned her Associate of Arts degree in art. Her home was filled with her works, including oil paintings, watercolors, ceramics, and sculptures. Linda's other great love was animals, especially cats. She brought her white cat with her when she emigrated from Japan and always had at least one cat in her home. She also fed and cared for neighborhood cats as well as a feral cat colony on Anderson Island. Her friends often gave her birthday cards and gifts with cat themes, and she liked to wear clothing with cat images. On May 25th, 2020, longtime Tacoma BWA member Midori Komodo passed away at the age of 93. Midori was born in Parker, Washington to Charles Torikichi and Haseo Taniguchi Okano. Midori and her family were sent to the internment camp at Heart Mountain, Wyoming during the war. In 1950, she graduated from the State College of Washington in Pullman with a Bachelor of Science degree in pharmacy. After graduating from college, Midori started her pharmacy career in Spokane, then moved to Tacoma to continue her career at Tacoma General Hospital. She married Frank Komodo in 1958 and retired as a pharmacist to assist with the family farm business. They had five children, Keith, Karen, June, Gail, and Jack. 
Frank and Midori were both devoted members of the temple and always were on hand for activities and fundraisers. In fact, Midori led the kitchen crew for over 20 years. She was known for being a great baker, especially for her pies. At fundraising events, her homemade blackberry and kataka jams always sold out. She enjoyed the fellowship of the BWA and attended as many meetings as she was able. Even when she couldn't attend a meeting, she made sure to keep up on the business that was covered. Midori also enjoyed many other activities, like reading a good book, cooking, making jams, babysitting her grandchildren, going to the casino, and watching tennis and the Seattle Mariners on TV. Our final BWA member that we remember today is Mio Kanda. Mio passed away on December 17, 2020, at the age of 95. She was born on January 23, 1925, in Tacoma. During World War II, she was interned at Minidoka and Tule Lake. While at Tule Lake, she met her future husband, Kazuo Kanda. Mio and Kazuo returned to Tacoma in 1958, where they raised two children, Jean and Cheryl. Mio worked for Boeing until 1990 when she retired. She enjoyed sewing, knitting, and especially spending time with family. She was a dedicated member of the BWA for many years. She loved coming to meetings, going on the bus trips, cooking in the kitchen, and participating in all the fundraisers and activities of the temple and BWA. We will miss her warm smile and genuine friendship. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Now we will have a music offering performed by Donna Sasaki. I want to thank everyone for watching Tacoma Buddhist Temple's Spring Ohigan and BWA Memorial Service. Thank you to Rev. Tadao Koyama and Rev. Cindy Yasaki for officiating, organizing, and putting today's online service together. Thank you to Donna Sasaki for providing today's music, 
and Carrie Mori for your reading on Lady Takeko Kujo and Lady Yoshiko Otani. And thank you to Temple President Crystal Inge for your thoughtful leadership. I would also like to thank the families of the BWA members we remember today, as well as Donna Sasaki, Patty Wong, June Akita, Thelma Abe, and Reverend Kosho and Michiko Yukawa for answering my many emails and calls for providing me with photos and information for today's service. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Thank you.